All right, we want to look at another case, and that is the case of removing fill. And the way that we're going to look at removing fill is that we're going to be adding a negative fill. So it's going to be very similar to the previous problem we did. We're going to set up two different time scales, and the only difference is really that we're going to um, we're going to have a negative fill. So for this particular problem, we are we start out and this again here we are with clay. Again, it's going to be single drainage. We are going to apply a fill of eight feet. And then we're going to remove two feet of that fill. So that we end up at six feet. When does all this take place? Well, so this is t equals zero minus our situation. We're going to put on the eight feet of fill for ten years. From t equals zero plus to t equals ten minus. And then at, at ten plus years, we're going to remove two feet of fill, and that's going to be the situation until infinity. And again, our question is, what will be the clay thickness? In this case, we're asking for the clay thickness at the end of 30 years. We have all of the um, all the soil properties are here. Um, our OCR is 1.2, C sub V, 3 square feet per year. Okay, so the solution is that we're going to treat removal of the fill as adding a negative fill. And as I mentioned, this is single drainage. HDR is equal to H, which is the clay thickness, which is 10 feet. So since our C sub V is 3 and capital T is C sub V times T over HDR squared, we get our capital T is going to be 3T over 10 squared, 3T over 100. So we set up our time scale. So I guess in this case I indicate all the times. And then I have the T1s and the T2s. So notice that since we are removing the fill at 10 years that what we find is that you know 10 minus is 0 minus 10 plus is 0 plus and 30 years for T2 is, is only 20 years because it's 20 years since the removal of the fill And we create our T, capital T1s and our capital T2s as we did previously using our expression that capital T is 3T over 100. Okay, so then what do we have? We have our UXS1 is 8 times 120. How do we get that? Because that's the weight of the fill, 8 feet of fill at T equals you know, T1 is equal to 0 plus. On the other hand, at T equals, you know, basically 10 plus, or we're calling it 0 plus for the, um, for the uh, small T2, our new time scale, is what? Well, we've removed 2 feet of fill, so it's negative two times 120. Then, once we've established those, the, the two initial excess pore pressures due to the change, either adding or subtracting fill, then what do we do? Then we use our, we use our values of capital T and our 
excess pore pressure curves to get the factor. So I have 0.3 and 0.9. I get 0.4, 1, and 0.11 from our graphs. Again, how do we do that? We, oops. Well, okay, again, we use the, um, uh, let me just, we use our pore pressure curves. Um, I guess I'll use that one. And we're, again, we have what? Since it's single drainage, I break it in half. I get rid of that. This is my middle of the clay. I go to my, whatever my capital T is, and I read it up. That's We've done this enough. I'm not going to go through the details of that part of it. You should be able to come up with those values. Oops. So, okay, so again, when T1 is 0.3, I get 0.41. When T1 is 0.9, I get 0.11. And then when T2 is 0.6, I get 0.18. So I get those factors from our excess pore pressure curves, and then I multiply them. Remember, it's, it's 0.41 times the 960, which is there. It's 0.11 times the 960. This is negative 240, so it's 0.18 times negative 240. So I get my U excess values. And notice, so remember, don't forget the negative sign. That's negative 240. That's negative 43.2. And the U water table is easy to get. It's always, you know, you know our point of, inter point of interest is the center. So because the point of interest is the center, it's 5 times 62.4. And then we simply add all of the pore pressures together to get the U. Again, to get the sigma V, I look at the right picture. For T equals 0 minus, I look at this picture. For T equals 0 plus, I look at this picture. 10 minus, oops, I look at this picture. For 10 plus, I look at this picture. For 30 years, again, I look at this picture. So, you can all get the sigma v's. And then, of course, sigma v prime is simply sigma v minus u. Again, like I say, the whole key is getting the excess pore. Once you have these excess pore pressures, the rest of it is what we've been doing repeatedly and very straightforward. So I end up with these sigma v primes, and now I get um, we know well I, we know our OCR was given as being 1.2, so my p, sigma prime p is the 1.2 times the Sigma prime I, which is 238, I had 285.6, and so I end up looking like that. What we're interested in, because everything is neatly laid out here in a sense, we're really only interested in what's going on here and here. And so, and of course, we use that. So we've done this enough times, we can create the epsilon v, you know, and um, so we have, what, the 285.6 over the 238, and we have the 895.6 over the 285.6.
we get our epsilon v, 0.1648, then our delta h is h epsilon v. So my delta h is 1.648, and my clay thickness at the end of all of this is 10 minus 1.648, which is 8.352 feet. Okay, now we're going to do the same problem, but this time we're going to remove a lot of fill. We're going to remove six feet of fill instead of just two feet of fill. And we'll see what changes that causes. Obviously, the things, things are going to, we're going to have the same small t's, capital T's, all that remains the same. The only thing that, that becomes different now is the, um, the u excess. So now instead of being negative 2 times 120, it's going to be negative 6 times 120. And, you know, so remember, this is still the same. The, these factors are still the same. The 0.41, the 0.11, the 0.18. All those are the same because all the times are the same. But what happens is that when we add up our, get our U by adding up all, of the, we add up all the pore pressures, well, we end up with uh, these pore pressures which are different. And then what do I do to get my, well, my, yeah, my sigma v is going to be different here because my picture at 10 plus and infinity is different, so I'm now looking at this picture, so I change that sigma v. But all of the, mechanism, the mechanisms are exactly the same, so in a sense, this problem is no different, but I'm going to show an impact of what occurs when the numbers end up to be a little bit different at the very end. So all the methodology is the same, but now I get these numbers at the end. Well, what is the impact of that? Well, now I've got, I've, here are my stresses. And notice, they increase, so I go from 238 to, no, 238, 804, 804, but what happens at the very end? Oh, it goes down. Instead of a continuous increase, I now get a drop in my effective stress and what is the impact of that. So these are the stresses that we just computed and we put them on here. I got the 238, I've got the well the 285.6 is the sigma prime p that we already calculated. Then we take it up to 804 but then what happens? It drops to 504. Now with our simulated lab tests that I gave you we did this. <laughs> In other words, what we've done is we've unloaded. And so what happens is that the unloading, as we know with soils, as we've said, soils are not elastic. In other words, if I load the soil and then unload it, it doesn't bounce back to where it was originally, you know, it doesn't get the same shape back. And this is illustrated in this curve here, and this is the way it goes. It goes, I'm loading it, loading it, but now I'm unloading it. Well, when I'm unloading it, I follow the, re, the, the C epsilon R curve. That's what happens. In other words, the slope of C epsilon R. We saw it in our lab test. In other words, it does not come back down, go... 804 and then bounce back up here. It doesn't go there, it goes there. So we have to take that into account when we do our calculation. So what we have to do is follow this curve here. So I'm going to follow from here to here, from there to there, and then I'm going to go there to there. So I have three different portions of the calculation. One, two, three different portions of the calculation. So it's straightforward. So what do I do? You know, I, for this portion, I follow, you know, C epsilon R, 
285 over 238. That's for the first part. Then for the second part, I'm going to be over in here. So I go C epsilon C, and then I'm at what? 804 over 285.6. So then I'm from here to here. And the third part is, and there are different ways to do it, but um, I'm at, I use C epsilon R, and now I'm in the range 504 and 804. Now I can do this two different ways. Um, in other words, I could do 504 over 804. When I do a log like that, it gives me a negative number. Or the way to look at it is I add that to that, so that takes me from here to here, and then I subtract negative that, and I have the 804 over 504. So these are the exact same calculations. Whatever way you want to do it is fine, whichever you feel more comfortable. So either of these calculations is okay. And... Um, we, end, we calculate out our epsilon v, 0.1346. Our delta h is 10 times that. And we get the thickness of the clay is 10 minus 1.346. So what you need to do is sketch this out like that. So note, when sigma v prime goes down, the path is along a c epsilon r slope. And as I said, you we did this in our lab test. This is what your lab test looked like. We had all these points that all lined up and then we had another long and different line. So in other words, we we loaded, 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 then we unloaded, then we reloaded. It goes like that. And that's the way soils operate, and it's verified by many lab tests. All right.